Welcome back comrades, this is Gaming with Austin and today we are on episode 141 of season 2 of the Utopian Community series. What I'm gonna do this Saturday, I'm still gonna exercise every day. But you know, what I'm gonna do, when I exercise, is I'm gonna st start training more like one punch man. Like, I'm gonna do it for the next several years. What I'm gonna do this episode is finish up Quadrant 3. The one side is finished. I'd start on Quadrant 4. My goal weight is to be about 157 to 160 pounds. Right now, I'm at about 150, which is, based on my doctor, not healthy enough because at that weight and my fat level, my fat levels are too low to be healthy at that weight. Because if you go too low with your fat levels, you're gonna be at risk for vitamin deficiency. Let me tell you. I used to have a lot more body fat than what I do now. But much of the body fat now is being replaced by muscle mass. Subcutaneous fat does not pose a health risk unlike beer belly fat. The reason why my dad said I looked uh, uh, pretty ugly, that's because I have almost no body fat left. I have very little body fat left. Either I have to gain muscle or change my body composition. To where I have more fat. Gain more muscle mass or change body composition. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gain muscle mass. Because when I grow up, I want to be a bodybuilder. started. It'll be about 8.30, like, 8.34 when I finish. Like, at the time of recording.
When I grow up, I want to be a bodybuilder. Like, one of the things I had, I had to start doing was the dumbbell rows. And I'm doing this to strengthen my upper back. Then eventually, I'd start doing squats. Right now, I'm at a, like with the bench pressing, I can press about 20 pounds with bench pressing. Like, right, right, despite the name bench pressing, I do it on the floor, because I don't have a bench to do it on. And eventually, I'm going to make myself a bench. Like, I'm going to learn how to make an exercise bench. A year of doing push-ups, um, like, by year two, I'm still going to do the same amount of push-ups as I do now. I'm still going to do the same amount. Eventually, I'm going to go from 20 pounds on the bench press to about 25 pounds on the bench press. Which means I'd... Like, I'd still do the shoulder press, but I'd be at about 10 pounds for a while. And eventually, I'd go from 10 pounds to 15 pounds. By the time I reached 30 pounds on the bench press, I'd have to buy 15 pound dumbbells. Because my goal is to build up as much muscle mass as possible. One way to get B12, if you're trying to avoid energy drinks, is Marmite. <laughs> like B12 without killing animals. Or exploiting them. In a way in which they would be harmed. weeks of exercising, you should focus on doing push-ups and sit-ups.
You should always start off with a training volume that is small. metabolism. Initially, when I exercise, like if you're used to eating one meal a day, try to bump that up to two smaller meals a day or else your body's going to go into shock. If you suddenly go from one large meal a day to five smaller meals, all of a sudden, and you stay at five smaller, uh, smaller meals, your body's gonna go into shock. You don't wanna send your body into shock. Mom? Google. What are the different types of shock? <sighs> what are the different types of shock? Okay, okay Google. What are the different types of shock? The different types of shock include cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, anaphylactic shock, septic shock, and neurogenic shock, which are caused by heart problems, anemia, allergic reactions, infections, and nervous system damage, respectively. Those are the most common types of shock. There is also insulin shock too, caused by a sudden drop in blood sugar levels. Insulin shock is caused by a sudden drop in blood sugar levels.
halfway into the video. The change I made as I started exercising like every day and increasing the intensity, like the training volume, I'd make a bigger change within the next year or so. Because in the first year of exercising, I had to start increasing training volume. If you want to know what training volume is, it's the number of reps multiplied by, uh, by the number of sets you do those reps. The number of, t the amount of times you do that number of reps. In training intensity, you gotta put, add another variable to the equation. Mm. That variable is resistance in pounds. The reason I'm, I'm thinking about increasing the resistance on my bench press is I want to make my push-ups easier in the long run. And once I start hitting the gym, literally, when I start doing squats, I'm going to use a barbell. I'm going to start using a barbell. increasing in resistance, it's going to be a little hard, but that's okay.
one potential risk for shock the type of shock is called refeeding syndrome My goal now is to go uh, go between 155 and 160 pounds. So between 70 to 72 kilos. Because mm -hmm. one of the things that can happen if you go from one meal a day to five smaller meals a day all of a sudden is you're gonna you risk going into hyper uh, hypoglycemic shock You don't want to send your body into hypoglycemic shock. And sending your body into hypoglycemic shock is not fun. It is not fun. So you gotta take it slow and steady. Like, instead of one large meal for breakfast, slowly add to your evening meal at the expense of your morning meal. do this assuming you're eating about 1450 calories which is about the average I consume now I'm trying to stand that but it's n not very easy Like, start off, like, start off by doing a 1,350 calorie meal now with a 100, like, in the morning with a 100 calorie meal in the evening on week one. This is just week one.
on week two, add another hundred calories. Like to your evening meal and subtract from your morning meal. And keep doing that until you reach equilibrium. Keep doing it every week until you reach a point of equilibrium. Like a 725 calorie breakfast and a 725 calorie dinner. Here's a tip. Because I know many of us, physiologically speaking, we cannot like change physiologically. Because a, a physiological change is not good for you. In fact, if your body experiences a physiological change, you're going to be at risk for shock. It can potentially cost you your life. So you got to do it in increments. Start doing it in increments. So start doing it in increments. Like decrement on breakfast, increments on dinner. Once it reaches equilibrium, then start adding lunch to it. Even if you can handle it, fasting does more harm to your muscles than good. Even if you're, even if you can handle it, you shouldn't be doing it anyway. No matter whether you can handle it or not, it's not a matter of whether you can handle it or not. It's about surviving. Do you know what will happen if you lose a lot of body fat in a short period of time? Your body's going to go into shock. Called hypolipidemic shock. One of the symptoms of that would be similar to symptoms of vitamin A deficiency. Your body regulates how much beta carotene can be broken down into vitamin A. Which is good news for vegans, but bad news for carnivores. It's good news for vegans, but it's going to be bad news for the carnivores. The problem with domesticating apex predators is that they play a very crucial role in the ecosystem. Which is why domesticating a tiger is not a good idea. 
Anyways, this should be it for this video. Don't forget to leave a like if you like this video. Dislike if you disliked it. Subscribe for more. Share this with your comrades on social media. And as always, don't forget to follow me on Instagram for more content like this. And as always, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. And peace out.